Hi, I'm Susan Lewis from WRTI, and this is Time In. I'm here with guitarist Sharon Isbin. Sharon, how are you? I'm good, Susan. I know you're looking terrific and that you're doing fine, and it's great to talk to you again. Well, these are really strange times. It's great to talk to you. It's nice to see you. You are so busy all the time. You're constantly playing new works, working with new people, traveling. Where were you when everything started to shut down earlier this year? Fortunately, I was in New York City. I was not trying to scramble back from another country or city. I was right here. But I, I feel very, very lucky, number one, that I stayed completely healthy. I have to tell you, um, this may sound odd, but I've been wearing an N95 mask for almost 20 years on every single airplane flight and eventually then as well trains just out of common sense to protect myself from all the people coughing up their lungs in airplanes and wearing gloves and all of that. So ever since I started doing that, which was about 17 years ago, I never once again got sick from a flight and it works and wearing a mask works. So for me, it's kind of like welcome to my world, walking <laughs> out and seeing everybody wearing masks when people had made fun of me before. And I thought, well, that's your problem. I want to stay healthy because I want to be able to do my best when I go on stage. It's hard enough for, for what we do as musicians when we're healthy, it's, we got to stay that way. And it's really remarkable that um, all I can say is really wearing a mask will make a huge difference. And, and that is just the most important thing we can do along with staying socially distanced. That's a great message, and I guess a lot of things will change even after this is over because people will be a little bit more careful like that, perhaps. I hope so. I am not seeing a lot of signs of that, but I think that if it really sinks in, that you don't have to get the flu, you don't have to get colds. I started doing it when SARS-1 became a, an issue. That's when I started wearing a mask on planes because I didn't want that thing. And I discovered that it just kept me healthy all the time. So uh, that's not going to change in my life. That'll just be an ongoing continuum. It's also important that we value other things like meditation. I've been practicing transcendental meditation since I was 17 years old. It's this very simple process, 20 minutes in the morning, 20 minutes in the afternoon. And it's a fantastic way to release stress so that you're not encumbered by it and to access your own inner core, your own creativity, and it helps you really be who you are without the domination or pull of stress to thwart that. And it, it really helps you to, in my case as a musician, uh, for focus, for mental stamina, for creativity, all of those things. And it's something I recommend for anybody. Transcendental meditation has been studied in over 400 very rigorous scientific experiments. And it's one of the only forms of meditation shown to reduce blood pressure, for example. It actually, for me, I believe is a fountain of youth as well because it prevents in a, in a strong way the natural shortening to the extent it would without meditation of the telomeres, which are a component of longevity in, in life. And the more they shorten, that is characteristic of aging, but TM has been shown to keep them lengthened. So there's so many reasons why it's a great thing to do. Just giving yourself a break twice a day, starting the, in the morning and the afternoon when you feel tired, it's rejuvenating. And it, for, for me, feels like it gives me twice as much life. And at the time we're all going through the, the challenges of and just the horrific consequences of a pandemic in this country and in the world, TM is a wonderful way to keep your balance and your focus and your inner strength and your health. Uh, we all know stress con contributes to ill health as well. So I, I just hope everybody can partake of it. There are TM centers all over the world. You can go to tm.org to find out the one nearest you. It's just a, a great way to um, 
stay on top of your game. Exercise, I, I'm very fortunate that I live just one block from the Hudson River in New York City. I'm, I'm in the Lincoln Center area and I just pop out the door and I can go jogging for miles on the river. It's, it's again, exercise is a great way to not only stay fit, but to stay mentally healthy. Um, I'm vegetarian, I do organic only, and being home has given me the opportunity to, to do that 100% as opposed to whatever may happen <laughs> on the road. And uh, all of that, I think, is a way to be able to make yourself more useful to society because if you take care of yourself, you're better able to take care of others as well. That's fascinating. So you have been doing things pre-pandemic that sort of nurture and, and take care of yourself, the meditation, the, the jogging, the eating vegetarian and organic. Has, since the pandemic has shut everything down, how has your life changed? Has your approach to those things changed? My approach ha has changed only in that I'm not going out to restaurants. I'm doing all my own cooking, which gets kind of boring after a while, but that's the way it is. At least it's really healthy. Um, I don't, I used to have maybe a, a glass of wine once a month. Now I don't even touch the stuff because I don't want anything to interfere with the immune system and I'd rather stay, stay healthy. Um, it, it has also meant that I'm off sugar basically because I, again, I don't want this virus any more than anybody else does, especially now we know the consequences of the long-term effects, which are horrific. And I just want to maintain peak health on every possible level. And so I feel completely uh, revitalized and I'm getting a lot more sleep than I used to get when I was constantly packing and going on the road. So on some level, this terrible pandemic has given me a chance to have the kind of respite from travel that I've never had in my life, not since I was left uh, college. And it is something that I can actually cherish that part of it to be able to get eight hours of sleep. And that's going to stay with me. I'm not giving that up. So I, I, <laughs> that, that is the part of my life that has been reformed in, in a good way. I was going to ask if there were discoveries you had made that um, about things that you would continue after the pandemic, sleeping more. Well, I, I had to catch up on uh, taxes that I'd never gotten around to doing. And I did it all in the space of a month and a half. And I had to jog five miles each time because I won't take any public transportation during the pandemic. I had to jog five miles each time to deliver the papers. And I discovered, wow, I can do that. I'd normally been doing two and a half or three. So I've just added a bunch more miles to my running and I just uh, feel <laughs> more fit than I've ever been in my life, which is, is saying a lot because I've, I've always had this as part of it. But I think just when you have to rely on yourself to be informed, to be informed politically, to be informed about health, all of those things, you can just get stronger in a variety of different ways. Do you have a meditation routine? Yes, the, the, and it's not anything I've invented. It's many thousands of years old practice uh, from India, actually. And that was one of the reasons I was very excited to visit India in February of last year, 2019, when I was invited to tour with Amjad Ali Khan and his sons, is to see the country that brought me a technique that I started when I was 17 years old and that has been such an important part of my life. So. You meditate in the morning when you get up before you eat so that your digestion is not interfering with the process of relaxation. And so 20 minutes on a, in a chair, no, no fancy position. I put earplugs in, that's it. And then in the afternoon, same story. And again, I just feel like it has given me twice as much life because it is so powerfully rejuvenative. Has there been any... Um music or videos or film or books that you've turned to? 
I, I wish I could say that I've had time to watch movies, but I've, <laughs> I've been so busy with the release of two albums at the same time, which is kind of nuts in itself. And, and, it's, and it's been three within less than a year. Uh, I've, I've, I've really had to focus on things like that, on getting a publication ready of the Joan Baez suite long overdue that's going to be published in January with uh, Mel Bay. Uh, this is the work that I recorded on an album called Journey to the New World, where Joan Baez and Mark O'Connor were guests. Mm -hmm. And it's a beautiful suite. It's finally time for it to be out there in the world by John Dwart. So my fingering is all of that had to be edited. There were a lot of things that were on the shelf I never had time to do that I'm now able to focus on. So I, I think I forgot what the question was. What was the question? Well, I was I was thinking that maybe you had turned to certain kinds of music or videos uh, music. or books. Yes. Um, but you've been one working. Of my <laughs> favorite composers to to listen to is actually sort of a, a Celtic folk popular style, Lorena McKinnett from Canada. And at one point when I was going down a rabbit hole on the internet, which happens all too often, I started to hear this amazing Spanish singer who sounded like Lorena McKinnett. And turns out they had performed together. I can't remember her name right now, but that was a discovery. And I, I hope once now I have tutored myself in video, which I knew nothing about before and never had to take videos before and I've had to learn this just grueling process on my own. Once I get through all of this, which is I think soon, I'll have more time to to watch movies and to um, listen to more music. I'm always listening to new composers that I mean that that's just about every day. Um, I'm always interested to explore things either written for guitar or not written for guitar. Working with my students at Juilliard, that was a challenge because obviously there is no in-person at Juilliard right now. And I have these amazing students right now from Australia and the United States. So I didn't want to do this on Zoom. So I decided to try a different approach that was they would create an audio recording of themselves playing whatever the pieces that we're going to work on they would send me a pdf with all the measure numbers notated for each line on the left margin and i would become their own personal recording producer and i would listen as if i were in a studio and i were critiquing them with the same degree of standards that i would if it were my, my own recording and the result has been absolutely phenomenal because we have no visual distractions. We're not looking at each other, neither virtually nor in person. And I, everybody's focused on listening, 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 refining it to the highest possible level. And I'm just stunned by the result of all of this. And it, it's a challenge for me too, because it's making me become an even more rigorous teacher and with even higher exacting standards than before. And I can replay, I might replay a few measures that they did several times to see what it is that's wrong, how to fix this. So you can't do that in a master class in that same way. You'd run out of time. This is, this is, I think, a new kind of revolutionary teaching technique I've never done before, but is proving to be very, very valuable for me. Right. Well, you might continue it after the pandemic alongside your in-person work. I think I think I may have to because it's just too good to to uh, not use. <laughs> also, I noticed on your website you have a section on guitars and there's a guitar that that you're talking about that you can travel with and there are there's one picture of you with three animals. Ah, Gretel? yes. Where is that taken and are those your animals? That was in Florida. I became friends with people uh, who owned, as pets, two monkeys. And monkeys were my passion. It's what drew me to go to the Amazon and to the rainforest in Costa Rica to visit the monkeys, basically, many, many trips. And by, by finding these two lovely women who have monkeys at their home, I was able to actually visit them, and Sheila was one of them, and then two of the animals you see there 
were emus that were pecking away on the strings of this travel guitar. They, they got a big kick out of going boing boing, and uh, so <laughs> did I. Luckily, this was a hardy instrument that wasn't going to be broken. So uh, yeah, I, I love animals. I, I, one of my cosmic experiences was just about four years ago, going back to Costa Rica. I think it was my third trip there, third or fourth, and going to an orphan baby sloth preserve. This was after performing with the Costa Rica Symphony. And I was with some friends. It was a, a challenging trip to get to this place in the orphan baby sloth preserve. But wow, what an experience. And I got to pet one of them. Her name was Millie on her little belly like this. And as I did that, she looked into my eyes and then with her two sloth claws, which are her fingers, she took my hand in her hand and held it and looked into my eyes. I could have died right there. I thought I'd, I'd gone to heaven. <laughs> that was just the most beautiful, magical experience. I will always cherish that. That's amazing. So you don't own any animals yourself? No, that, that would be too hard with all the, all the traveling. And, right, uh, right. I, right. I, I enjoy other kids that are owned by other parents and animals that are owned <laughs> by other people. So that's kind of, for me, the yeah. best way to experience it. Wow. That's interesting. I, I didn't know that about you and, and animals. That's great. Well, thank you so much for sharing some of your thoughts on this strange time with us. You've released two albums during this pandemic. Yes, Strings for Peace, which is world premieres for guitar and sarod, the sarod being an instrument from India, played by master Amjad Ali Khan and his two sons, Aman and Ayan Ali Bangash and Amit Kaptekar on tabla. And these are ragas that um, Amjad wrote for us. And uh, this is just absolutely gorgeous music. If you're looking for something that again, connects to another sphere and that is relaxing and exploring and beautiful and mesmerizing, that's a place to go, Strings for Peace. And the other, of course, is Affinity, which are premieres from composers who compose for me from three different continents. So has when you release these albums during the pandemic, did you do some live streaming or is, is how, does the pan how has the pandemic affected your album release? Well, I, I have done a number of interviews that are live stream. I have not done any performances that are live stream because I've seen a lot of them that didn't look so good. So <laughs> I prefer to do them pre-recorded. So I have done pre-recorded performances that have become part of streaming operations. Right. And I just, I have to do everything here in my living room as you're, as you're seeing. And uh, it has been a fascinating and challenging journey to figure out how to do all of that and to record with a microphone, all of the things that other people have normally done for me. It's made me more self-reliant on that process and to be able to, to record with various radio stations all over the world and send them a file via Dropbox, it, it just makes everything possible, really. Right. Well, thanks so much, Sharon. It's been wonderful to talk to you. Thank you, hope, Susan. Hope to see you in person sometime soon. I do too. Thanks a lot. And I hope all of your listeners stay healthy and well and strong. Great, thank you, and you too.